Kopi chana valabam, Kinivana Hari. Shoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunchavi Hari Jayam Vishnupad Paramahamsa Parvajakacharya Astarasata Sri Srimad, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Anantakoti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Iskan Founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Grantarad Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Gaur Premananda Hari. The Mount Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Vasai Bhutalesh Madhi Bhaktivananta Swami Tanavane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharani Nirvishesha Shanyahari Pashtada Deshatarane Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 9 Chapter 18 King Yayati Regains His Youth Today we're going to s start with text 26, which doesn't have a purport, so I'll read it myself. Then we'll chant together text 27, which has a purport. So, text 26. Vrishaparva tamagyaya pratyanika vivakshitam guru prasadiyam murna padayo patita pati Translation, King Vrishaparva understood that Shukracharya was coming to chastise or curse him. Consequently, before Shukracharya came to his house, Vrishaparva went out and fell down in the street at the feet of his guru and satisfied him, checking his wrath. Text 27. Kshanarda Manyur Bhagavan Shishyam Vyachasta Bhargavaha Kamo Sya Kriyatam Rajan, Nainam, Tyaktum, Ihotsahe, Chanarda Manyur Bhagavan, Shishyam Vyachasta Bhargavaha, Kamosya Kriyatam Rajan, Nainam Tyaktum Ihotsahe Chan Arda Manyur Bhagavan Shishyam Vyachasta Bhargavaha Kamosya Kriyatam Rajan Nainam Tyaktum Ihotsahe Chanarda Manyur Bhagavan Shishyam Vyachasta Bhargavaha 
Kamosya Kriyatam Rajan Nainam Tyaktum Ihotsahe Dainam Taktam Ihotse Tanarda Manya Bhagavan Shanarda Manya Bhagavan Shisara Chasta Parvata Kamasya Kriyatam Rajan Nainam Takta Mihotsahe Shanarda Manya Bhagavan Shishyam Vyachasta Bhagava Amosya Kriyatam Rajan Amitumihotsahe Vaishnavis Haramanya Bhagavan Shishyam Vyachasta Bhagava Samosya Kriyatam Rajan Chana Arda Lasting only a few moments Manyahu Whose anger Bhagavan The most powerful Shishyam Unto his disciple, Vrishvaparva, Vyachasta said, Bhargavaha, Shukracharya, the descendant of Brigu, Kamaha, the desire, Asyaha, of this Devayani. Kriyatam, please fulfill. Rajan, O King. Na, not. Enam, this girl. Taktum, to give up. Iha, in this world. Utsahe, I am able. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Translation. The powerful Shukracharya was angry for a few moments, but upon being satisfied, he said to Vrishaparva, My dear king, kindly fulfill the desire of Devayani, for she is my daughter, and in this world I cannot give her up or neglect her. Please repeat. The powerful Shukracharya was angry for a few moments, but upon being satisfied, he said to Vrishaparva, my, my dear king, kindly fulfill the desire of Devayani, for she is my daughter, and in this world, I cannot give her up or neglect her. Purport. Sometimes a great personality like Shukracharya cannot neglect sons and daughters, for sons and daughters are by nature dependent on their father, and the father has affection for them. Although Shukracharya knew that the quarrel between Devayani and Sharmista was childish, 
As Devayani's father, he had to side with his daughter. He did not like to do this, but he was obliged to because of affection. He plainly admitted that although he should not have asked the king for mercy for his daughter, because of affection, he could not avoid doing so. Omigyana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshur on militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shri vasadi gaur bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So the topic here is affection. And you know, Srila Prabhupada has pointed out that not just in human society, but even among the animals, this sense of affection between parents and offspring is there. Once Srila Prabhupada was recounting that he was in the city of Kanpur in India, staying in some house there, and he was having his breakfast prasadam. So he was sitting near a window in the room where he was eating, and the, the window had some bars on it, but it was open. So in through the bars came a little baby monkey. <coughs> attracted by the food and he started taking some of the fruits or whatever off Srila Prabhupada's plate. <clears throat> but Srila Prabhupada said he noticed that the mother of this baby monkey was going nuts outside the window, just totally freaking out because she was very afraid for her child because of this parental affection that's there. So Srila Prabhupada says he took the little monkey, he pushed it outside through the bars again, and the mother was satisfied. You know, because of this affection that's naturally there between parents and offspring. So the Sanskrit word for affection is sneha. <coughs> And it comes up a lot in the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's some chapters that are called the Uddhava Gita, <coughs> where Krishna is speaking. Uh, transcendental knowledge to his devotee Uddhava, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is speaking transcendental knowledge to his disciple and friend Arjuna. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam in 11th canto, uh, the Lord speaks to Uddhava some transcendental teachings. And in those teachings, Krishna warns Uddhava against atisneha, too much affection on the material platform. He said, you should avoid this atisneha or else you'll experience suffering like the pigeon did. So then Krishna goes on to explain to Uddhava the story of the pigeons. You know, there was a, a male pigeon and a female pigeon, and somehow or other they became affectionate toward each other. They became attracted to each other, and they made a little nest in a tree in the beautiful forest, and there were beautiful breezes and flowers, and everything was wonderful, and they were very much enjoying each other's company and when the you know female pigeon she wanted something she would she knew just how to induce 
her companion to act in the way that she wanted and he agreed to do this. So they were just enjoying life in this way. And eventually little pigeons came <coughs> and they became very affectionate to them, you know, as we're, we're seeing. Uh, it's natural that this kind of affection is there. So, <coughs> They very carefully took care of the little pigeons. They were very happy to see them chirping and gradually growing up and learning to uh, flap their wings. And they became very satisfied by that. And one day, the male and female pigeon, they went out to get food for their little baby pigeons. <coughs> And while they, they went out, they got some food. They came back and they saw that a hunter had come with his net and had thrown his net over the baby pigeons. So especially the mother became very upset, crying. <clears throat> and she rushed forward and the hunter captured her as well in the net. And then the male pigeon, he began lamenting very much, you know, to see that the baby pigeons and his, his children and his wife were caught in the net by the hunter and he rushed forward and he was also caught. <clears throat> so uh, Krishna was telling Arjuna that, you know, a soul in this world should not become a victim of this ati sneha, this over affection for material relationships because they're all temporary. The force of time is there like the hunter with his net. <clears throat> Kalosmi lokachaya krit, uh, Krishna explains to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, time I am, destroyer of the world. So time is going to eventually separate all material relationships. So this ati sneha, over affection for material relationships is not good. But why is that tendency for affection there? Mamai bam so jiva loke, jiva bhuta sanatana. Krishna explains that the soul is eternally part of him. In other words, there's an intimate relationship between the soul and Krishna on the spiritual platform. Uh, Krishna says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sadhavo hridayam mayam, sadhunam hridayam tvaham. I am in the hearts of my devotees and I am in the hearts I'm in the hearts of my devotees, and my devotees are in my heart. So there's an intimate, affectionate relationship between each soul and Krishna. And that affectionate relationship is constantly increasing and growing in depth. So that is the natural condition of the soul to be feeling this spontaneous affection for the Supreme Personality of Godhead and experiencing the Lord's affection for him or her. <clears throat> that is the natural condition of the soul. That's why we crave affection. We desire to give 
affection. It's the natural condition of the soul. So in, material, in the material world, this is covered over. Srila uh, Prabhupada explains in one of his purports that affection for Krishna is dormant in the heart of everyone. But when this affection is expressed through the material mind and body in relationship with other material minds and bodies, it's not going to ultimately satisfy the soul. <clears throat> the soul can only be satisfied in its affectionate relationship with Krishna. And when that is established, then one can establish proper affectionate relationships with all Krishna's parts and parcels. <clears throat> So, in the practice of bhakti yoga, there are instructions about how to properly engage in affectionate relationships, <clears throat> but keeping Krishna in the center, keeping Guru and Krishna in the center. If one is able to do that, then one can experience proper affectionate relationships in this world and at the same time be cultivating one's ultimate spiritual relationship with Krishna. Actually, this sneha or affection on the spiritual level is a stage in the development of prema, pure love of God. <clears throat> and in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in Lord Chaitanya's instructions to Rupa Goswami, it's laid out how from, in the development of prema, uh, this Sneha is one of the stages, and this sneha or affection where there's melting of the heart at the thought of the beloved Lord Sri Krishna. Then from there come other stages, mana, uh, pranaya, raga, anuraga, bhava, all the way up to Mahabhava, the ultimate stage of loving ecstasy of the Lord. So there is a spiritual basis for you know these feelings of affection. Ultimately, they're meant to be expressed in relationship to the Supreme Lord Krishna. <clears throat> but uh, and that this can be cultivated in bhakti yoga in this world, but you can also go wrong. You can become a victim of ati sneha, this false material affection. And you know, Sri the Prabhupada gives some examples of that. He he said once when he was living in Calcutta as a householder, <clears throat> you know he went out of his house and he saw one of the neighboring women severely chastising one of her sons. <clears throat> this woman had two sons, a younger one and an older one. And she was chastising the young one very severely. And Srila Prabhupada recalled, he, he wondered, well, what's, what's going on? You know, some, you know, if you were to see, you know, one of the women in the community severely chastising, chastising uh, her kid, you, you might wonder what's, what's happening. So Srila Prabhupada inquired. He said, well, his older brother has a very severe disease, typhoid fever. And when you have typhoid fever, you're supposed to fast. You're not supposed to take you know, fried foods or rich foods or anything like that. So 
the older brother being sick and fasting for a long time, he, w he wanted to enjoy some nice food. So his little brother had affection for him. So he went to his little brother and he said, go get me a parata. <clears throat> so because the little brother had affection for the big brother, you know, he's thinking, oh, my big brother wants a parata. Even though he's supposed to be fasting, he went and got it for him. <clears throat> And it caused him to get very, very sick. So he, so he had sneha, he had affection for his brother, but he did something. In the name of affection, he did something that, wasn't, that was harmful, actually, to his, his big brother. So his mother was chastising him. So this can happen sometimes that in the name of affection for somebody on the material platform, we do things that ultimately aren't beneficial to uh, that person or to ourselves. <clears throat> and there are many examples of that. Uh, for example, in Bhagavad Gita, at the start of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is feeling affection for his family members. And because of this ati sneha that he's manifesting towards his family members, he doesn't, you know, he hesitates at first to obey Krishna's instruction that he fight, fight them these family members. <clears throat> so in Bhagavad Gita, that's one of the teachings that Krishna gives Arjuna, that ultimately you can't be attached to material relationships if they're going to interfere with your practice of uh, devotional service. And we see that sometimes for the purpose of developing beneficial relationships with the whole of human society, certain persons in their practice of devotional service, uh, they renounce you know, these relationships. Like a sannyasi, he, he renounces uh, family ties, ties with his narrow uh, biological family in order to become free to preach for the benefit of all the conditioned souls, that larger family. Uh, Srila Prabhupada did that also. You know, he took uh, sannyas, you know, and he said, you know, sometimes, yes, I gave up <clears throat> my you know, biological children, sons and daughters, but Krishna has given me such a big family with so many thousands of sons and daughters. So sometimes that is necessary. Now, it doesn't mean that if in the practice of devotional service, one finds oneself with certain duties and responsibilities. For example, if one has entered the Grihasta ashram, one has certain duties and responsibilities. You know, sometimes uh, devotees would prematurely approach Srila Prabhupada, you know, male devotees asking to take sannyas, and he would say no. You know, you have wife, you have children, you have to be responsible and take care of them. <clears throat> so it's <clears throat> part of the practice of bhakti yoga that we have to learn, you know, the proper way in which to 
engage in affectionate relationships with others. And sometimes if one goes too far in one direction to becoming too absorbed in material affection for in the purpose of sense gratification and material relationships, it becomes an obstacle to devotional service. Ati sneha. <clears throat> or on the other hand, if one ignores the proper kind of relationships and becomes artificially renounced, that can also become an obstacle to one's practice of devotional service. <clears throat> so there are examples of uh, sometimes attachment being a good thing, like there was the case of uh, <clears throat> A Jamio. You know, he was leading a very sinful life at one point, <clears throat> but he was very attached to his youngest son. He had affection for his youngest son, who he had named Narayan. And because of that family affection, that parental affection he felt for his son, that at the time of death when the Yamadudas came to drag him away and punish him for his sinful activities, he chanted the name of Narayan out of that family affection that he felt for his young son. And because of that, the Vishnadudas intervened and prevented him from being taken by the Yamadutas. <clears throat> but then, after he was rescued, he had to properly practice devotional service in order to achieve the perfectional stage. Or, you know, there was the case of uh, King Chitraketu, who was very desirous of having a son. So he got a benediction from Narada Muni that he could have a, a son. And he had a son with one of his many wives and the other wives became envious of the attachment he was feeling for the wife who had given him the son. So they poisoned the child. <clears throat> so he was, King Chitraketu had been very attached to this child. So he lamented extremely. But you know, by the arrangement of Narada Muni, the child's soul appeared again. And the child in his form in that way, his disembodied form, was speaking to Chitraketu and saying, you know, why are you lamenting like this? I'm not lamenting. <clears throat> you know, I've had millions of fathers and mothers in the course of many, many lifetimes. You know, the soul is different than the body ultimately. So uh, why are you lamenting for these temporary bodily relationships? You're eternal, I'm eternal, we're all eternal. <clears throat> so sometimes that point is there. And even Queen Kunti, she actually prayed to Krishna, uh, sneha pasha imam chindi, cut off the 
bonds of material affection you know, that I have for my relations, my relatives. You know, she was praying like that. <coughs> Of course, in the purport, you know, Srila Prabhupada explains it doesn't mean a devotee can't have affectionate relationships with family members, but the point is it should be in relationship to Krishna. That is the trick. <coughs> How to balance, you know, the relationship with Krishna and Guru and one's relationship with family members, especially family members who are devotees as well. Uh, that's part of you know, the practice of devotional service. <clears throat> but ultimately, you know, this affection comes from, it's a reflection of something that really exists on the spiritual level of reality, this sneha, which as I said is the stage of prema, uh, pure love of Godhead. And it, it exists in different varieties. And this is explained in the Nectar of Devotion and the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the works of the great Acharyas in our line like Bhaktivinod Thakur, you know, he wrote one book called Dasamula Tattva, where he explains these things. And <clears throat> this uh, sneha, or pure affection for the Lord, is like, uh, it's like the heart is just melting with these pure feelings of love for Krishna. <clears throat> So ultimately, we want to attain that stage. But in order to get there, we have to sort out our affectionate relationships in our practice of devotional service in this world in order to qualify ourselves to attain our pure loving relationship with, with Krishna. So I'll stop there. Does anybody have any Such an annoying Prabhu. He he chastised his wife and, and the other members to don't disturb the dancing of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's one. Yes. The other one is uh, one Indian devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, Swamiji, he said, in the battle of Kurukshetra, Arjuna was crying and lamenting. And uh, why is that? And Prabhupada said, well, it's natural for a father to, be, to have affection. So my question is, uh, you know, like, if you, can, if you want, would like to comment, is that, that he heard the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, and he said that his doubts are dis have been dispelled. He's like, he's free from the three modes of material nature. But at that particular time, it appears that he's lamenting and crying and Krishna is right there. So is would you this like to in comment? connection with when his son was killed? Abhimanyu was killed. Abhimanyu. Yeah. 
Well, <coughs> it's uh, you know, Abhimanyu was also a devotee and was fighting for Krishna, you know, on Krishna's side. So, uh, you know, we can see, you know, it's, it's said, for example, that when the, a great devotee departs, you know, other devotees will feel <coughs> sad <coughs> and display some emotion. Said, you know, like when, when Sri the Prabhupada departed, you know, many disciples are crying. <coughs> so you could say uh, they heard so much instruction from Srila Prabhupada about not lamenting and things like that, but still, but that this emotion is more on the spiritual platform rather than being a, a kind, the kind of ati sneha that Krishna was warning Uddhava against. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's other examples like that, you know, the example of, who was it? Uh, there was Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master, and when, when he was departing this world, who, who was it, was it Ishvara Puri, or, or was it his spiritual master? Ishvara Puri's spiritual master, uh, Madhurendra Puri? Yeah, so he was crying out of separation and one of his disciples was saying, well, why are you crying? Why are you lamenting? It's all Brahman and, you know, you're... So there's a distinction between spiritual affection and the emotions that are connected with it and material attachment and the emotions that are connected with it. <clears throat> Sri, oops, Svavasprava. Right. And weeps tears. Yes. So it, it appears that, I mean, you know, how much anguish there must be there in disappearance of these great souls that someone is expressing their Sorrow by thinking that I'll just I can simply just beat my head against the rocks, right? <clears throat> yeah, I was also thinking of that. Sri the Prabhupada ki jai.